Are you sure there isn't anything you want to tell me about yesterday? Anything I want to tell you? Not really, we just sort of ran around a bit. Gran's brow furrowed. She let out a long sigh. Her voice was quiet and even. I have to go take care of something. You are to stay in this house for the day. Under no circumstance are you to leave. What? If I am not back by dinner, there's stew in the icebox. But... But nothing. You are to stay here. Understand? Yeah... Say it. I'll stay here till you get back. Good. Oh, and Luca, you left the icebox open yesterday. We're not made of money, you know. Well, that was strange. An eerie electronic sound echoed from Luca's bedroom. Hello? Is anyone there? Hello? Rolo, is that you? If this is about me, um, accidentally kicking you yesterday, is Rolo here? No. Look at me, Luca. This is serious. Is Rolo here? No, I haven't seen him since yesterday. Rolo didn't come home last night. What? A pit formed in Luca's stomach. Where was the last place you saw him? Uh, we were playing around in Weepwood, and then it was late, and we went home. Weepwood? If he's alive, I'm going to kill that little creep. Was there anything else? Anything that he said? Luca's mouth felt dry. No. We were just messing around. Okay. I need to go let people know to check the woods. You just stay out of trouble. Go see if he's hiding in the library or something. Luca could feel his heart beating in his throat. Rolo? Where are you? Check the library for Rolo. Breaking our promise to Grandma. Hey, Bert. Have you seen Rolo? Nope. Though, I've been mostly talking to clipboards. They're setting up lots of stuff for the festival. This one said he had to process some answers. I told him that was fine. I'll wait right here until he gets back. Howdy, Luca. 
Hello again, Pete. I'm not Pete, you silly goose. It's Toby. Yeah, could have fooled me. Well, hey, it's no problem, no? The important thing is, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, I'm getting that impression. Well, we're all part of something special, Luca. And it all starts right here in Beacon Pines. I got it. Toby looked up from the clipboard excitedly. That's right. So how about you start by telling me? Look, no offense, but I've got my own stuff to take care of. Ah, oh, you joker. We're all part of this together. You'll let us know when you're free to answer a few questions. We really need to get back to work. Just a couple more minutes. If Roxy said she'll be here, then she'll be here. I don't see why I'm standing around. Doing nothing. And waiting for Roxy. When I could be standing around. Doing nothing. And getting paid for it. Come on, Lumi. Roxy needs our help. Ugh, my parents wouldn't listen. No offense, but isn't Rolo always getting into trouble? Something feels different this time. What can we do to help? We need to check where the adults aren't. So I guess it's up to us to check Weepwood. Our shift doesn't end for another couple of hours. We could spend the time making posters. That would be great. I guess. Right, Fitz and I will check Weepwood. We'll be back later to pick up the posters. I think my dad has a map of Weepwood. Let's swing by my house and grab it before we head out. What's this about a missing child? I must stress that the situation is completely under control. This all seems so terrible. And are you sure there's nothing we can do to help? Nonsense. Young uh, Mr. Cotter will turn up safe and sound, I am certain. You just focus on settling in. I trust my sister has supplied you with suitable lodging? Oh, yes. Miss Valentine has been more than accommodating. We were just telling our daughter Beck that... Now, where did she run off to? Cotto volunteered at the library during the summers. He wasn't very social, so he'd dedicate each summer to becoming an expert in a single subject, making him a reliable source of very particular knowledge. If you were to ask Cotto something he didn't know, he'd escape into the dusty old bookshelves and return with just the right thing. Hey, Cotto! Cotto was lost in his reading. Luca crooked his neck to see the title, Introduction to Melatology. Pick up on me. Good book? No, no, just started it. He gestured to the shelves. I'm really running out of books I haven't read yet. But now it's on to the wonderful world of bees. Turns out bees are pretty cool. For instance, did you know that around 70% of bee species actually live in underground tunnels? Or that if there are two queens in a hive, they will fight to the death for supremacy? Fight. That's interesting, but... You haven't seen Rolo around recently, have you? Not since yesterday. Keep an eye out for him, okay? Sure thing. If I see him, you'll be the first to know. There were rarely any actual new additions. Simply, a variety of existing content rotated into the front display each week. Not fooling anyone. The bottom corner shelf was a dusty array of thick science books. Only one binding was clean enough to read. Cellular Biology and the Chemistry of Mitosis. Oh, ring. 
psychological phosphorescence. <laughs> More like my co complete loss of interest. What sort of monster puts candy behind a locked door? Oh, yeah, Mr. Nuncree works weird hours sometimes. Of course he does. How about you? When do I work? No, what's your name? Luca Van Horn. You new here? Yep, not by choice. Beck's family moved often, giving her little time to establish any real connections. She would tell you she prefers it that way. I'm looking for my friend... I'm looking for my friend Rolo. He didn't come home last night. So, he's missing? Yeah, so... Like, missing? Missing? Does that sort of thing happen a lot around here? Luca shifted his feet uncomfortably. Well, that sucks. Yeah... So, I should probably get going. Hey, wait up. What? Beck pulled a coin from her pocket. I'm coming with you. What? So says the unlucky penny. Unlucky? Yep, well, technically it landed on heads. Leave this kid to find his friend alone. But I always do the opposite. Oh, that's kind of like me and Rolo. I guess Rolo is my unlucky penny. That settles it. A person should never be without their unlucky penny. Let's go find him. Name's Beck. Pleasure to meet you, Beck. I suppose I could use some help. Try to keep up. Dang, they boarded up the way in. Luca felt a chill as he approached Beck. Her eyes were locked on the strange green liquid. The nearby grass was coated in a fine layer of frost. Uh, is this sort of thing normal around here? Because puddles of glowing ooze are definitely not what I expected from this place. I have no idea what that stuff is. Well, the next obvious step is science. And what does science suggest? Poke it with a stick. Luca watched as Beck dipped a broken tree branch into the goo. Beck's eyes widened as flowers grew from the dead wood. First small buds, which quickly bloomed into vibrant petals. What the? Cool. As quickly as they had grown, the flowers began to shrivel and turn gray. Beck dropped the stick with a grunt of disgust. Okay. So the science tells us this gunk is weird as hell. Uh, yeah. It seems dangerous. Hey, Tish, look what the cat dragged in. Oop. I don't have time for this right now, Iggy. Ah, uh, don't say things like that. It hurts Tish's feelings. Ain't that right, Tish? Yup. Looks fine to me. Why, hello! I don't think we have been properly introduced. Iggy's the name. This is my compatriot, Tish. Yup. Probably heard of us. Can't say I have. I'll forgive you just this once on account you being new around here. Why would you hang out with this Don? Oh, he seems pretty alright. Iggy, why do you have to be so... You. Has he even told you that his parents skipped out on him? Shut up. True, they got tired of having such a pathetic kid and left him. Iggy, I'm only going to say this one time. Don't talk about my family. 
<laughs> well, look who's grown a backbone now that there's a girl around. First his pops croaked. Then his mom finally couldn't take it anymore and bounced. Iggy took a step towards Luca, his sneer lit by the glowing puddle. Beck could see tears welling in Luca's eyes, his fists clenched. Some things about Beacon Pines were very different from the city, but a bully from a hayseed town is really no different from a city bully. Beck took a deep breath and thought. Well, time to bust out the... Strange. Well, time to bust out the strange. All right, Luca, looks like you need a little mud bath. What's wrong with you, new kid? We're about to pound your friend. Beck stared in silence. The only sign of life being the twitch of an eye. Weird when people don't talk. Yep. Not being a weirdo. Uh, hello? Are you some kind of wackadoo? Makes sense wackadoos travel in packs, eh, dud? At the sight of Iggy taunting Beck, something in Luca snapped. Iggy smirk shifted to a look of shock as Luca launched himself into his stomach. Ah! ah. Iggy's clothes were drenched in the glowing ooze. You jerk! My clothes are ruined! I'm gonna... Iggy's voice began to slur as he struggled to get up. I don't feel so good. I'm sorry, I just... Oh, shit. Yup. That was intense. Iggy's gonna be okay, right? Nothing about this seems okay. The person at the warehouse. This strange ooze and what it did to Iggy. Was Rolo caught up in all of this? We have to find Rolo. You took the words out of my mouth. Property of Valentine Fertilizer Company. Looks old. Whoa there, little buddies. You startled me. What in the dickens are you up to in this part of town? We were just helping look for Rolo. Oh, you haven't heard the good news? Rolo showed up safe and sound a bit ago. Really? So where was he? It's funny, really. He just got a little turned around in the woods. It can be disorienting, you know. I am starting to get that impression. Rolo's at his house now, getting some well-deserved rest. Oh, that's a relief. You two should scurry along before you get lost yourselves. Yeah, come on back. I can't wait to introduce you to Rolo. Oh, that reminds me. Luca, your grandmother was looking for you. She was? She's worried sick. You should march straight home. I guess. Back your folks might be getting worried too. I'll walk you home. I need to talk with Nelly about work anyway. Beck glanced toward Luca. I guess all is well that ends well. I'll introduce you to Rolo tomorrow. Sure. Glad he's okay. Rolo was safe. A wave of relief washed over Luca which was quickly replaced by a sense of dread. Gran is going to kill me. If he hurried, he might just make it home before sundown. Chapter 4 Our Harvest Awaits Luca took a deep breath and gingerly opened the door, stealing himself for Gran's wrath. Ran? I'm home. Everything's fine. 
Fran? Fran? I know I wasn't supposed to go anywhere. I was just helping look for Rolo. Fran? Roxy came over. She was worried about him. So I figured you wouldn't mind if I helped looking for him. Turns out Rolo is safe and sound. Luca was alone. The house was empty. So, Grant's not back yet. I guess that's a good thing. Nothing to do now but sleep, I guess. Luca was sitting by the pond, listening to small waves lap against a rock. His father sat in a folding chair in front of him. Without turning, he spoke. Why don't you grab me some nice bait? Sure thing, Dad. Luca hopped over to the tackle box and popped open the lid. Inside was a rolling, buzzing mass. We're fishing with bees? Luca's father gave a warm chuckle. Well, you catch more fish with bees than honey. Pick us out a good one. Luca closed his eyes and plucked out a bee. He could feel its wings struggle between his finger and thumb. Holding it at arm's length, he hurried over. His father deftly baited the hook and examined his work. Interesting choice. With a practiced flick of the wrist, the line buzzed in a graceful arc. The water accepted it without a splash or ripple. The wrong choice, but I respect it. The pond began to freeze over. Sometimes we gotta make the wrong choice before we can make it right. Pallid ice propagated across the still surface with an alarming speed. Luca scrambled back as the ground beneath him turned cold. Dad, I don't understand. Sorry, kiddo. Understanding isn't always part of the deal. The relentless ice shot through the fishing line toward his father. Dad, look out! His father casually wound the reel. None of it's your fault, you know. Never was. Dad, we have to go. Luca grabbed his father's shoulders, trying to pull him away. Please, you have to run. The ice crackled as it spread across his father's hands. That's the thing about fishing, Luca. His chest began to crystallize. You toss your hook in, and you never know what you're gonna pull out. A shock of searing cold ran up Luca's arms. He gave one last desperate tug. The chair tipped backwards in a single frozen mass. Luca tried to stop the momentum, but it was too late. He watched the icy form of his father slam into the hard ground, shattering into a thousand pieces that crowded around his feet. Dad, I don't understand. What does all this mean? The gentle rustle of leaves was the only reply. Luca's eyes struggled to focus on the walkie-talkie. Rolo? Faintly, he could hear Rolo amongst the noise. Luca! Rolo, is that you? Luca! There? Rolo, it's the middle of the night! Luca, thank God. Listen, I don't know how long this thing will work down here. Down here? Lolo's voice was coming through more clearly now. But some words were still just static. Listen to me, someone grabbed me yesterday. What? The man in the hazmat suit? It was... Took me to some sort of... I think I'm underground. Underground? Are you okay? Kinda. They seem more interested in... For now, at least. Mr. Kerr said you made it back home safe. Kerr? No. Trust. He's... Hold on, someone's coming. The signal went silent. 
Rolo? Rolo? Where are you? Luca held still, waiting for a response. His pounding heartbeat marking the passage of time. Okay, I think they're gone. Getting worse. I can barely hear you. Rolo's voice began to fade. Losing signal. Not much time. Mission control. You need to... The tree house. The tree house. With that, the signal died for good. What was he trying to say about the tree house? What's at the tree house? The antenna. He wants me to use the antenna in the warehouse. He wants me to use the antenna in the tree house to get a better signal. Rolo, you're a genius. Luca grabbed the walkie-talkie and sprinted to the treehouse. Hook up the walkie-talkie to the radio in the treehouse. Beck took a deep breath and thought, well, time to bust out the tickles. Well, time to bust out the tickles. Hey, Tish, want to see something cool? Mm. Yeah. Check it. Beck lunged forward and began to tickle under Tish's arms. Yeah, 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 yeah. What? Tish, is she tickling you? Tears began to form in Tisha's eyes as she gasped for breath between gales of laughter. Yep, 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 yep. Beck redoubled her efforts until Tish finally had had enough. Yeah. What just happened? Seems nice. Sorry for the interruption. I think you were just threatening us. Iggy's eyes darted around, a realization dawning on his face that he was now outnumbered. Yeah. I just remembered. I have somewhere to be. Mm -hmm. See you around, new kid. Iggy kicked at the puddle before making his escape. Whoa. What a little creep. Uh, Beck, I think you got a little ooze in your hair. Beck shook the ooze out of her hair as best as she could. Is it bad? It... Depends what your feelings about having a more refined. It depends. What are your feelings about having a more mature, refined look? Oh God. Chapter four. The best policy. Luca paused for a moment, catching his breath. He'd only just met Beck, and somehow he already managed to drag her into this mess. Hopefully he could make it up to her, but finding Rolo was his primary concern. Luca, what the hell are you doing out here? And why did a kid with gray hair just run past us in a panic? Roxy and Fitz looked drained. It was clear they'd spent all day searching. That's back. I don't care who she is. What happened? We were just helping look for... We were just helping look for Rolo. Luca, I need you to start telling me the truth. Roxy's temper could often be dismissed as the impatience of an older sibling. But this was the most intense Luca had ever seen her. Her eyes were wild and unfocused, looking straight through Luca. We're running out of time. In a torrent of rambled words and tears, Luca broke down. Rolo and I weren't just playing in the Weepwood yesterday. We were investigating lights at the old Valentine warehouse. But someone was there in a strange suit. And we hid in the dumpster and a heavy bag dropped on us. And I think it was a body. And so we ran, but we got split up. And I ran home. It's all my fault. And now my best friend may never come back. Wow. Just 
Wow. Roxy, still exhausted and angry, softened briefly as her eyes hunted the ground in thought. With a determined sigh, she looked up at Luca. Not your fault, Luca. Rolo's gonna be okay, I promise. Roxy drew herself up. I'm gonna fix this. Luca, go home. But I wanna help. This is too dangerous for a kid. I can't just sit around. I have to do something. Roxy tried to think of the safest place to send Luca. You go back to that little treehouse you two like to play in. Wait there in case Rolo shows up. Sound like a plan? Luca wiped his cheeks and gave a quick nod. You did the right thing telling me the truth. Now, scoot. You really believe his story? What, are, uh, what other option do we have? Things have been strange around here, leading up to the festival. My dad has been acting weird lately. Well, weirder than normal. Looking into the puddle, Roxy rubbed her arms to warm up. Why is it so cold here? Why does give me the willies? Wait at the tree ha tree house in case Rolo shows up. Mr. Nuncree jumped with a start. Whoa, don't sneak up on an old fellow like that. Sorry. Who are you talking to? What? Luca motioned to the phone booth. Oh, no. I was just checking because I thought I heard it ring. But the dang thing never does, of course. Yeah, I've never seen anyone use it, really. The whole thing's a big waste of money, if you ask me. Any word from Rolo yet? Not yet. Long time for a boy to lose his way. Rolo knows those woods too well to get lost. I suppose you're right. Silly boy's antics have this whole town worried sick. Antics? Well, we all know Rolo likes to play his little pranks. You think this is a prank? But what other possible explanation could there be? He's not playing a prank and he didn't get lost. Someone took him. I know it. How would you know that? Unless... Luca, is there something else that you know? Mr. Nuncree gently placed one of his substantial hands on Luca's shoulder. Dang it, boy. If there's something you know, something that could help your friend, you need to tell folks. Luca peered up at Mr. Nuncreed. Kind eyes warmed a stern face. There was a deeper emotion hiding beneath it all. It was subtle, but Luca could sense something eating away at him. There was a shame lurking behind those eyes. There was a shame lurking behind those eyes. A deep sadness. If Mr. Nuncreed was that worried about Rolo, maybe he could help. Yesterday, Rolo and I were messing around at the old Valentine warehouse. Mr. Nuncreed raised an eyebrow. Both of you? You were with Rolo when he went missing? Not... Exactly. I was hiding in the dumpster. The dumpster? What were you doing in there? At first we were just looking around. And someone in a strange yellow suit came and dumped something on us. We both got scared and ran. That was the last I saw of him. You got scared by some garbage? Well, that's why you don't go skulking in someone's dumpster. But it wasn't garbage. Think... It was a body. I'm sure it was just some trash. No, there was a name tag. It said Deep Engineering. Mr. Nuncreed's shoulders slumped. I wish you wouldn't have said that. A deep sigh bellowed from his chest. Why did you have to? I tried, Luca. God knows I tried to keep you safe. Luca attempted to take a step back, but Nuncreed's hand clamped down on his shoulder. But you Van Horns just can't help yourselves, can you? 
We were all so close. So close to being done with this. With a firm shove, Nuncreed manhandled Luca into the phone booth. What are you doing? Out of my hands now. The door latched shut with a mechanical hiss. As Luca pounded the glass, the floor dropped from under his feet. The inside of the phone booth was now a loose capsule plummeting at gravity's whim. Luca winced and pressed his hands to the walls. As he braced for impact, the capsule hurried to a surprisingly smooth stop. He felt a cold rush of air and opened his eyes with hesitance. Two large figures in hazmat suits occluded his view. Luca heard the deep, resigned voice of Mr. Nuncreed over an intercom. He knows too much. The end. Wait. No. This isn't the end. I know there's still much more. Somehow this went wrong. Okay, let's try something else. Hook up the walkie-talkie to the radio in the treehouse. 